So once again, being lazy, Carolyn and I decided to take a break from the never-ending work of off-grid living. Obviously, off-grid living means that you have to work non-stop from sun up, well actually from 4.30 in the morning till midnight at night. There's no time for a break when you're living off-grid. That's the hardest work you'll ever do. Well, <laughs> not for me. I don't know why. I don't work that hard at it. So we came to another conservation area. A few days ago, I took you to one that had a river. Now, this one is called a river. Uh, not so much in my mind. But I will say that the water can get up kind of high. You can see the roots exposed and the water does get up quite quite high and in some cases the water marks appear to be higher than my head on the trees but i've taken it down here before this is a this one's not too far away from us and it's more whereas the last one was more for camping and fishing this one's more for hunting there's a lot of grassland over there just just up the the creek here just just right up there a lot of grassland i'm sure deer well we've actually been here and the deer were just everywhere so carolyn likes to come down here and look at the rocks if she could she'd load the truck up with little flat rocks so she can make pavers all through the property but i just kind of like coming down here just for the hike we've only been here I guess this is our third time and it's it's kind of neat i would like to see the water level up and you can tell it hasn't been that long ago and we had a flowing stream here but every time i come here it's empty and there's a map that comes with this one at the parking area i'm not going to tell you where we're at it <laughs> the last conservation area i tell you the trolls are impossible you know they they comment 30 seconds after the video post where's this conservation located and i said yeah let me uh, give you my address while i'm at it i mean when i tell you that a conservation near us it's not going to take a genius to figure it out well these trolls know where i live they spend, that's all they got to do. They don't have anything else to do in life other than terrorize. You know, they're, they're on welfare and stinking in the van because they don't know how to bathe. And the only thing they know how to do is get on Google and look up Little House Off Grid and hope for some sake that they'll find us. Have one guy get on Google Maps and actually name our property he didn't name it correctly so and he called it a business so i had to go to google maps and say there's no business here well of course now we get constant junk mail from people trying to sell to the business that he he established for us they're insane so now i'm not going to give you the name of this one because this one's actually closer to where we live than the last one Oh, so that troll, he, he wanted to know where, where it was. And so I replied. And then a bit later, he comes in with a different account and gives the name of the conservation area. So everybody can see it in the comment section. Well, I just went and blocked both of them. So, Carolyn and I are trying not to break an ankle or twist an ankle or anything. It is kind of treacherous walking. It would be uh, tough to get back. I thought, well, if something happened, we could bust through the gate with the truck and drive down here and get the other person. But I'm not entirely sure the truck would be able to break the gate without severely damaging the truck and shutting it down. Because I think newer vehicles nowadays shut down on a front end collision. Or... So I guess you would have to back into the gate. Regardless, let's just not break an ankle. These are the things that I completely feared when we were nomads. At least here, I know exactly where the ambulance district is. I know how to get there. 
It'll only take a few seconds. I could go get the ambulance, but we don't have phone signals out here. So if we didn't know where the ambulance was, we'd be in trouble trying to get back to civilization. And as a nomad, when we went hiking, it, it was terrifying. I remember when we were in Kentucky and we just kept following the trail. We thought it was the, the marked trail. We just kept walking and walking and walking. Lost our phone signal. So eventually I got the phone signal back and I opened up the GPS app and it told us how to get back. It, it was scary. So I don't know. There was just not much that I liked about the nomadic lifestyle. It was just constant anxiety. People burn your camper down. And truck breaking down out in the middle of nowhere in the uh, KNAB National Forest in Arizona. That was terrifying. Mouse bit through a wire. I guess they call it a coil nowadays. I don't know what they call it. But it's the wire that goes to the spark plug. It's, it's not a spark plug wire anymore. So there's a whole assembly. I don't know what it is. Anyway, the way it was acting, I, I figured I lost a cylinder. And, and we're driving and driving and driving. Finally, I get to the National Park area, not into the National Park. And there's this little mom and pop shop there. So we pulled into it. I popped the shroud off of the top. And there was that wire had been eaten through. I was able to rewire it just with a piece of wire I had there and there and, and tape, duct, or, uh, electric tape. It's still there today. I haven't changed it. I haven't bought the actual component. I think it's $500 to buy the whole assembly. So as long as it's working, but man, that was scary. And if I hadn't been able to fix it, I don't know what we would have done. Out there in the middle of nowhere. So these are the concerns I have as a nomad. You know, you got people out there pretending to be Moses. Come on out and live in the desert. It's the greatest life you'll ever have. You don't have to work, don't have to eat, don't have to drink. You just live. And then you get out there and people starve to death and die of dehydration. I mean, I know of a person died of dehydration. Uh, one person died of cancer. Couldn't get home, ran out of money. I know that the people would go to the Moses' annual event, big party they have out in the desert. I'm sorry I'm not looking at the camera. I think it's more important to look at the rocks so I don't break my leg. And so people drive all the way out to Arizona to meet the Moses and then not have any money to get out of the desert. And Moses wouldn't help you out. He'd just leave you behind. So they'd spend the entire summer in the desert. People are gullible, I guess. I guess you could say the same thing about me and Carolyn. But one thing we knew was we had to have money. No matter what happened, money was gonna bail us out. It's the same philosophy I have today. I was the first person to mention back then, you gotta have an emergency fund if you're gonna live off in the national forest. Because if something goes wrong, you're gonna have to have money to fix it and sure enough we weren't even a year into it somebody burned down our camper we had to have money what would we have done if we didn't just went out there like the Moses told us to so we built a little truck camper and was able to continue on our journey but I thought that would be better having a truck camper but it ended up it was even worse because somebody burned down the camper then They'd have taken the truck with it if we would have been out walking like this. Carolyn, that's the tree that we stopped at. You can go either way. This one's probably easier now that I'm looking at it. Well, I don't know if it's easier or not. It's definitely a little bit more creepy as far as if there's snakes. So Carolyn wanted to make sure that we marked our way. So she she marked this tree as the spot that we had to came in at. So now you come up here and you'll see that it's just grassland. 
And this is the kind of conservation I'm familiar with. Uh, the one I took you to the other day, I'll put it up next box at the end of this video to that video. But that one had camping areas, really nice camping areas. Nice fishing area, nice stream. This one would be just for deer hunting. There's really no reason to come out here unless you do what Carolyn or me doing and just going for a hike. But like I said, the last time we were here, deer were everywhere. And they were playing and they weren't scared of us. So if we get up here, I don't want to get Carolyn into the camera here. So I don't understand the map. I think the map is wrong because I can see the signs here that says end of prop public property. Well, the map says it goes on over. So there's the sign right there. The blue white sign. So it make the map makes no sense. It is completely wrong. I'm sure of it. So this is the uh, grassland. Now you would have to be careful hunting here. I mean, it's only I think 200 yards that direction. And then there's a house. So everybody would have to sit up here by the parking lot and shoot this direction. I wouldn't want to hunt here. When you come to conservation areas, oh my goodness, it's like World War III. Everybody is trying to get a shot off at the same deer. And I used to hunt in conservation areas. I, I don't think I'll ever do that again. It was when I was younger, but now I'm a little bit smarter. And then the conservation also goes across the road, just up the hill a little bit. They call this a cave conservation area. It indicates that there's a cave here, but boy, I couldn't find it. That would be neat to go in the cave. <laughs> my second grade teacher didn't believe me. She actually had to call my dad. Dad and I, and mom some of his friends used to go spelunking we had all the equipment we had the headlamps you know back here in the 70s and there was a, a cave called pp cave and it was in fenton or high ridge missouri house springs missouri maybe it was house springs anyway it was around there so we, we went there several times it was fantastic it was incredible and then uh, I feel like there's some other caves that we went and visited not near as spectacular but these are not tour guided caves these were holes in the ground and dad would lower us were down and there was a wall right on both sides of you and an opening this way and an opening this way and you walk around and it's kind of like a an entrance to a cathedral it, it was amazing just it opened up huge and then you know you crawl around in the mud and the gook and we used to eat that potted ham for well, when we get hungry and we had these headlamps that had the the big six volt batteries and you'd have to wear a belt to carry that around with well I guess we didn't know back then but dad went back into one of the hidden parts of the cavern and knocked off a stalagmite and a slag tight. Now slag tight is what hangs up from the ceiling. I always remember that because it hangs on tight. And the slag might is what comes up from the, the ground. And so I took those in for show and tell on the second grade. Miss Moraz, Miss Moraz, Miss Moraz, something like that. And she didn't believe that the story I told, which was, you know, mom, dad, and me went spelunking in, in a cave. So she called dad and, to confirm my story and let her know that I was fibbing or let him know I was fibbing but I wasn't fibbing it, it really was a good memory I remember that uh, out in Hillsboro Missouri he, now dad was raised in this area this this area I'm about ready to tell you about within he was probably within a mile of this cave and we walked over there was next to a creek we went in and it was it was pretty fantastic to start with but then it, it shrunk up real quick of course I was real small so I was always the gopher I would always have to go in there and, and look around and see 
that if dad went through the effort of crawling through that little hole if it was worth it so i would crawl in there and nope this is it this is the end fantastic memory so if i ever saw a cave i don't know i'm getting to the age now i'm, I'm not i'm not as risk take you know take risk like i used to but i sure like to just dive into one again it was really a good time good memory so if you'll click this up next box it'll take you that video where i showed you the other conservation area so if i can inspire you to take a break from life sing live your dreams thanks for watching